time. Oh yeah, put the ones in the sky. Woo. This is for you, Mama Rose. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's your boy Miles Angel back in with another video, man. Um, happy 4th of July to all of y'all. Hope y'all having a great holiday so far. Um, dude, so we had the WrestleMania 40 behind the curtain documentary drop yesterday on YouTube. Um, man, first off, I just want to say, man, thank you for WWE. Thank you, WWE, for, you know, letting us have this for free on the tube and uh, letting us all be a you know, watch it together as a community, um, and then, you know, have a discussions about it and all kinds of stuff, man. And second, shout out to all the fucking wrestling content creators that got on this documentary. That is so cool, bro. I watch y'all all the time, man. Kicking with Ross, Santi Zap, Weezy Blonde, you know what I'm saying? Um, many, many more content creators that got on that documentary. That's so fucking cool, bro. You guys literally deserve it, man. Like, and subscribe to these people too if you never heard of these guys. I'll link their channels into my bio, bro. They're, bro, these content creators, they're awesome, man. I'm so happy they got on there. But, um, what's it called, man? But yeah, man, uh, I watched this WrestleMania documentary yesterday. Um, it's cool, man. I mean, it was, it was cool to see, you know, the behind the scenes of how WrestleMania 40 got constructed. Really, the main event. They only talk about the main event. Of how that uh, got constructed for both nights um but uh there was a lot of inconsistencies in this too kind of like i feel like there was a lot of cap in it um from all parties you know what i'm saying i think the rock is capping in there i think triple h is definitely capping cody rose capping you know what i'm saying um here's the reality man and, it, and i know it's a mute point now because we already had the match cody's the champ right now um the match was great it actually worked itself out in the end i you know i was wrong about saying that the match was not gonna hit like last year motherfucking match hit better than any match of this decade that is facts man and i am a man enough to say nigga i was wrong on that but bro listen like the Rock and Roman was locked in last year at WrestleMania 39. It was confirmed by The Rock on the Pat McAfee show. You know what I'm saying? It was confirmed by The Rock on the Pat McAfee show that when they were in Boulder, Colorado. And that same day, The Rock came back to SmackDown after, after years. I think the first time The Rock's been on WWE television since like the when smackdown debuted on fox back in 2019 you know what i'm saying um and that was penciled in it got wiped out because it couldn't rock couldn't fit it in his schedule he couldn't have to take the time to you know i guess train for that match so you had two options Sami Zayn or cody rhodes Sami Zayn had a great story with uh roman but we all knew cody rhodes definitely had to face roman that was a more in that's a more intriguing match than Sami Zayn and roman at, for wrestlemania that is just facts like you some of you roman reigns marks because cap you know no cody rhodes definitely was the man to face roman last year you know what i'm saying he didn't get the job done and that was a botch they should have had cody rhodes beat roman because last year roman's reign was fucking a terrible he only had i think maybe two or three title defenses after um the cody match man he was basically a tag team wrestler for the, like most of the year 
Um, dude, like you, the whole bloodline situation last year, you could have done that without the title. You know what I'm saying? And then we could have had Roman and Rock match this year at WrestleMania. But hey, it's all good. We're probably going to get it next year. We better get it next year because I'm tired of waiting on that fucking match. Um, But anyways, yeah, man. And Triple H, you know what I'm saying? The, the, The documentary, I don't know if it was trying to make Rock and Triple H save face here. These niggas sound confused, nigga. Triple H, he didn't make no sense in this documentary, to be honest. Nigga said, nigga had Cody Rhodes win the Rumble. But told him the same day, hey, we're going to go with Rock and Roman. Now, I don't know if WWE was trying to insult our intelligence. Like, nigga, we all know the world heavyweight title was not. That was not the way Cody Rhodes is going to finish this. That's not the title that he wanted. You know what I'm saying? He came out the next SmackDown after he won the Rumble. He said, hey. That is not the... I I want to face you for the title. Just not right now. And he gave his matchup to The Rock. And then the press conference, this dude comes out and says, this is bullshit. Nigga, you... Storyline-wise, you look like an idiot, bro. How you gonna point at the guy in the Rumble match after you win? You're gonna point at Roman, then come out the SmackDown and say, oh, I don't... I don't want to face you. And then come out again at the press conference and be like, oh... I do want to face you now. This is bullshit that this is all happening. Like, nigga, you the one who gave up your spot. You fucking stunard. But, um, you know what I'm saying? So the whole way that Triple H was booking Cody Rhodes during that time was fucking atrocious and stupid and confusing. It's just facts. It was. And I'm glad that they, the situation worked out itself. But WWE pivoted. Because they, they're trying to make it seem like to these fucking marks that they had this all in the plans. Like, we are all just got worked. Like, no, nigga. Rock, you could say your bullshit. No. Co- uh, Cody, you could say your bullshit. No. Triple H, you could say your bullshit. No, I'm not stupid, nigga. We did not get worked. You guys pivoted because it, that video of Roman and Rock facing off was the most disliked video. Whether the crowd reaction there was loud as fuck it was still the most disliked video in that we want cody shit was fucking making headlines my nigga way more headlines than rock and roman at the time don't insult my fucking fucking my fucking intelligence like you guys were just creative enough to be like oh we worked y'all we just wanted to see if you guys were you know which match was gonna be better we just wanted a reaction because why would you put Cody Rhodes in that situation to look like an idiot? You know what I'm saying? And don't give me the fact that they did an audible. That's a that's cap, nigga. They did not do no audible in the Royal Rumble. CM Punk was never meant to win that match that day. I watched that pay-per-view. Motherfucking, they were talking about all night how who's the, who was the last back-to-back Royal Rumble winner and all this shit. Bro, they doing that, they did that way before CM Punk got injured in the match. You know what I'm saying? Yes, Punk and Rollins was in the plans, but Punk was never meant to win the Royal Rumble. It was always Cody. And that's dumb. That was dumb. You know what I'm saying? And for the people that say, oh, Cody Rhodes. What was Cody Rhodes supposed to do then at WrestleMania? That's a Triple H fucking problem. He wasn't creative, but he wasn't booking superstars creatively enough to, to make other storylines for Cody Rhodes. I could have thought about him 50 other things for Cody Rhodes. Maybe book LA Knight good. Maybe we could have had an LA Knight Cody Rhodes for you. That would have been cool. We, we could have had a fucking Cody Rhodes and John Cena. John Cena still pulled up at WrestleMania and he's still fucking wrestled the night after uh wrestlemania on raw we could have tons of other things for cody rose to do cody rose and carrying across if you book carrying across good enough we could have cody rose and carrying across that may have been interesting you never know book some wrestlers better but no you botched that so that's that's not that's a triple h creative problem that we we want to know what to do with cody rose you know what i'm saying you don't have this guy win the rumble and then have him point at fucking Roman and then 
come out the next SmackDown and be like, oh, I don't want to face you. That is the dumb. No matter what y'all say, that isn't stupid to y'all. That wasn't dumb to y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we all know that him facing Seth Rollins made that make would make no sense. And that would make Cody Rose. There's Triple H sitting here in the documentary talking about, I didn't want to kill Cody Rhodes' momentum. You would have fucking train wrecked his momentum if that really went through. You would have went through with Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes facing each other for the world title. That would have been the dumbest shit. I even said back then. I said, that's stupid, dude. That is stupid, man. So, yeah, you know, like, this documentary, I feel like it was just a cater to Mark's. Um, and it was just to make The Rock and Triple H save some face, you know, for them botches that they was doing earlier in the year, bro. That's all it was. Um, it, obviously, it's a mute point now, but, you know, the documentary came out. I want to discuss it and say that they're not fooling me, nigga. You're not fooling me with this shit, bro. Um, and for the people that also think that this, that we all got worked or this was the plan all along, um... I hear you, cause nigga, I ain't gonna lie. When I seen Cody Rose boo hooing in the bus with a, a big ass bottle of vodka, nigga, after that shit, yeah, that seemed like a work. I I could see the work. If you guys were talking about it, it's a work, I, I could see it, cause that was hilarious to me. I'm like, nigga, nigga, depressed as fuck. I mean, I I, I get it. Cody Rose is passionate and shit, but holy fuck, bro, you ain't the only fucking wrestler that. Did not get his moment at WrestleMania, bro. Holy dude, like you main evented the year before, dog. And you won back to back rumbles, my guy. Like, jeez, dude, this that shit had me dying. But um Yeah, man, I'm still very happy that we got this documentary. Um You know, uh it's I would recommend checking it out. You know, you take your you have your own opinion, form your own opinion on it and stuff. Um, but to me, it just seemed like more of like an ego filler and trying to change the narratives that, you know, the rock, you know, was not trying to bury Cody or anything like that, or which I don't think he was trying to necessarily definitely, uh, all parties botched that in the beginning, but it worked. Like I said, it worked out in the fucking end, bro. It worked out in the fucking end. Um, and you know, we got a great fucking, uh, we got some great moments on Raw, and the final boss character was fucking epic, that's probably the best character we've had, um, for The Rock in ever, man, I mean, that final boss character is fucking lit, uh, him bringing, changing the theme song, they even showed in the documentary of, like, The Rock, you know, working on his entrance music and all that shit, um, we also had, uh, what's it called? Seth Rollins, you know, he was talking about, uh, you know, his knee injury. Seth Rollins is the real MV fucking P, bro. This dude battled, went through two fucking WrestleMania matches with a torn, uh, MCL, bro. That's, or, that's crazy, bro. That's, that's crazy, man. Um, and Seth Rollins is a fucking goat. He's a legend, bro. Like, and the fact that he's already returned now is fucking epic as well. Um, I do wish, like I said, I do wish we had more Roman and Seth talking throughout the documentary. I think this documentary could have been like an hour 30, to be honest, maybe two and a, two hours, man. But hey, man, and it took him so long to fucking drop this too, man, uh, for what we got. But hey, I, I can't complain. Like I said, the, the match worked out itself in the end. Everything I'm saying really doesn't matter anymore because you know which cody's the champ we had the match and it it was the probably the one of the greatest moments in wrestling history bro <laughs> by far by far and probably and definitely one of the top five moments in wrestlemania history for sure bro but um yeah man i just wanted to give my quick thoughts on this uh well i don't know about quick thoughts but my thoughts on the wrestlemania documentary i like i said it, it and to me, it seemed like an ego narrative type of documentary, but it's still a good watch if you're into like the behind the scenes type of shit, man. So, yeah, I definitely uh, recommend giving it a check, uh, a little uh, check out or whatever, man. Definitely give it a watch 
and whatnot. But yeah, man, I'll catch you guys in the next video. And uh, hopefully we get Rock and Roman next year at WrestleMania 41 in Vegas. Um, I'm tired of waiting on that fucking match, man. Um, if we get Cody versus Rock at WrestleMania next year, I might rip my fucking hair out, man. I think that shit should just be at Royal Rumble in Indianapolis. And we could have a great story with Rock and Roman, man. I, I need that match. I'm tired of waiting on it. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Vegas is the perfect place for this shit. Um, it's where it all started. Come full circle. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I guess it comes full circle too for Rock and Cody. You know, that's where their feud started. But, you know, I, I really need Rock and Roman, man. I really need Rock and Roman. But, yeah, let me know in the comments what y'all think, man. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the flip, man. Peace. Bag up, bag up. Bag up, Terry. Put it in reverse, Terry. Put it in reverse. Oh, Lord. Lord, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. What the what, what you doing, Terry? Terry, what you doing?